Hey there, and uh, a very warm welcome to my workshop here in uh, Sheffield, England, where, here in part two, my objective will be to depopulate, spray paint, and begin the long process of uh, repopulating the chassis, provided I at least get the power supply working in this uh, episode, I'll be uh, happy. <laughs> it is a good idea to have the tuner capacitor vanes meshed when uh, working on the chassis. They can easily bend if not, and it is also a good idea to remove all the valves, especially those with top cap connection. It is so easy to damage them if the uh, chassis is resting on the top cap connection of a tall valve, like this uh, CBL31 for example. It is of course prudent to memorise their position or uh, valve bases on the chassis before uh, removing them. <laughs> so from what we saw on the top side of this chassis and what we observe on its underside it would be immensely folly to connect unchecked and unrestored valve radios like this one into an AC supply conducive to operating condition. Be aware at all times, valve equipment operates with high voltages. If there is any doubt, consult a known bona fide technician before thinking about working on vintage valve equipment. If you are following along and continue to do so throughout this particular radio restoration series, you do so at your own risk. Be aware, electricity kills. It was time to uh, do some detailed documenting and labelling before I depopulated the uh, chassis. Here are a few uh, photographs I've selected of how I accomplished uh, that process. I'll show you how I store the components for this radio, such as transformers, coils, tuning capacitor, etc. Safe inside there. Inside the second box, or tub rather, is the uh, rat's nest. <laughs> Inside the uh, third tub are the four valves. I put this rag in to stop them from rolling about, minimise the risk of them cracking. And last but not least, the fourth tub, we see the uh, loudspeaker. Safe inside there.
Yep. These uh, plastic tubs, which contain toffees and chocolates, are not only useful, they are essential for this type of work. I've um, labelled each tub AD75 so I know where all the components are for uh, this radio. I'll return after the uh, chassis has received two coats of uh, grey primer paint. This AD75 chassis which is in fairly good condition, has been totally depopulated. Having uh, cleaned its surfaces, both top and underside, with paraffin, it is now ready to be uh, rubbed over with uh, 600 grit, wet and dry uh, abrasive paper. Looking at its underside, the grey paint is badly stained. Rubbing its surface over with paraffin on a rag did nothing to uh, remove it. Not that it worries me. <laughs> Once uh, rubbed over with abrasive paper, it will be ready to uh, receive two coats of grey primer paint. I'd say this radio chassis has uh, painted up reasonably well. I'm not attempting to imply it is 100% or anywhere near that figure, but I'm pleased with it. I did say I only intended to give it two coats of grey primer paint, but I went ahead and gave it a third coat of gloss paint, which is not too far removed in shade from the original shade of grey. Whilst waiting for the grey paint to dry, I decided to take a look at uh, the replacement low frequency chokes that are in my stash. It's not an impressive amount by any stretch of the imagination, but when comparing the physical size to the original choke fitted on the um, radio chassis, they are uh, either side. That is to say, they are either too large or uh, too small. Not deterred, I took a deeper look at the uh, original choke. My usual modus operandi in this respect is to unwind the first 1000 turns of copper wire from uh, the original winding. About three quarters of the way into the unwinding of the copper wire from here unto here, which was OC in several places, hence the uh, five pieces of masking tape to secure the ends of the wire, the inner connection of the uh, copper wire on this part here uh, broke off from the rest of this winding. And even with the use of a jeweler's loop, I'm un unable to uh, locate where it is, somewhere underneath there. Consequently, Unravelling wire off here onto there, I uh, thought about winding a replacement choke. Here is the uh, cardboard former I made uh, earlier. Fits nice and snug on there. I don't know the uh, exact value of the original choke, but I'm going to guess it was somewhere between 6 and 10 Henry. Winding a replacement choke 
onto this former with um, this copper wire 38 SWG is definitely going to be a long-winded and tedious task but it has at least to be attempted. I'm about a quarter way through winding this low frequency choke coil. I'm three quarters of the way through, not that you would notice. <laughs> Here we go chaps, I wound as much copper wire as I'm going to wind onto this cardboard former. I will tightly wind sticky tape round this coil of copper wire and test for DC resistance. It's starting to look more like a low frequency choke. Its DC value resistance is... 226 ohms. It will suffice. I'll uh, give this winding and its former a coat of uh, varnish. This clamp looks a lot better for uh, a degreasing and uh, blow over with silver spray paint. I'll go on to uh, clean this board. We'll see how shiny it becomes. All considered, this wee board has cleaned up uh, quite well. It is now ready to be refitted onto uh, the clamp. At long last, this low frequency smoothing choke is ready to be fitted back onto uh, this chassis. As I said a moment ago, I do not know the value in Henry's of the original smoothing choke, but I guess it was somewhere between 6 and 10 Henry's, perhaps 12 Henry's. I'll uh, quickly test this uh, reconditioned choke to see what it reads. Right, it is 226.9 ohms and its inductance reads 14.37 Henry's. Hmm. Right. I'm uh, satisfied with that. A few years ago when I worked in television and audio servicing, rewinding chokes, coils and transformers was unheard of. We wrote out a chit and submitted it to the uh, man in the stores. Parts were usually off the shelf. If they were out of stock, the storeman would look up the uh, part number and order the required components. Those days, television and audio came into the service department, they were repaired or scrapped, and out they went. Unfortunately, Echo, as an independent manufacturer, ceased to exist after around 1960-61. Um, they merged with Pi, consequently ordering specific parts like low frequency chokes, direct from Echo is now impossible. The Echo factory no longer exists, so we now have to make and repair parts as best we are able. 
It's now come to that time when I begin populating uh, this chassis. To begin repopulating this chassis, I have decided all four valve bases, after being cleaned, will be refitted along with the heater ballast or dropper resistor. In effect, whilst I'm fitting the four valve bases, I'll be uh, dragging this rat's nest along since it is still connected. I left it in situ or in this arrangement because it helps serve as a reference along with the labelling to uh, where everything is positioned and how it is connected. There is one particular part I will not be refitting onto this chassis. The mains connection uh, interface it will be placed inside a polythene bag and left inside the radio should anyone decide to reinstall it in the future. Why have I decided to do that? This radio is an AC-DC arrangement, therefore one side of the mains is connected directly down to deck. Consequently there is a 50-50 chance the chassis will be live, so therefore it is dangerous and potentially lethal. In place of uh, those two interface prongs <laughs> protruding out from the rear of the radio chassis, a double insulated mains lead will be hardwired direct to the uh, main switch. I'll uh, go over to the uh, circuit diagram so you can develop a clearer understanding of how I intend to begin repopulating and uh, wiring this chassis. For some strange reason I've referred to this mains part uh, connector which was located onto the rear of this radio chassis as an interface. It is a part interlock not an interface. Using this circuit diagram to show what I will be refitting onto the uh, chassis first, I will begin with the mains on off switch. Next the uh, suppression or filter chokes L14 and L15. Next will be the uh, associated filter capacitors or suppression capacitors C25 and C26. Once they are fitted I will uh, go on to fit R19, the heater ballast resistor along with the four valve bases. One side of the uh, V1 heaters is strapped down to deck along with uh, off the mains or one side of the mains is also strapped direct to deck thus completing a circuit. Right I'll begin the task of repopulation of this chassis. <laughs> I've marked out a scrap piece of copper clad phenolic board. I'll drill fixing holes at either end as well as drill a hole in the centre to accommodate this uh, mains cable boot. It should be okay once it's fitted. And there we have it chaps. Now I will fit the valve bases. Yes, it's coming along fine. Onwards and upwards as they say. <laughs> I'm beginning to develop the idea this radio has at some time in its dark past been subjected to a temporary huge increase in mains voltage. A kind of uh, prolonged mains surge. There is a large scorch mark on the back cover close to where the ballast resistor is positioned. The low frequency smoothing choke 
but the signs of overheated and burned out and now I discover this audio output transformer primary winding reads as OC According to that, absolutely nothing. I'll just do a speaker and uh, battery test. Yep, yeah, the battery, the speaker is okay. Again, absolutely nothing. Fortunately, the uh, all four valve heaters read has been fine. There is no way I'm going to do another rewind session. The last one seemed to take forever. Fortunately, I have a uh, replacement audio output transformer that uh, reads fine. Zero sixty three ohms. I'll do a speaker test with the battery. That's fine. Pleased with that. And uh, not only that, it will uh, drop into position where the uh, original transformer was located. Hmm. It will definitely require a thorough good clean before I install it onto uh, the radio chassis. Appearance wise I say there has been some improvement achieved here. I have located two uh, wonder plugs. The saw that used to be used for aerial and earth on uh, the old valve radios. They will uh, form part of the uh, speaker connection. Wonder plugs are not easy to locate these days, or certainly not as easy as they used to be. Right, I'll now uh, fit this audio output transformer onto the uh, chassis. For the present, Everything that needs to be back onto this chassis is back onto this chassis. I've decided to replace the original 1 meg log volume control. Not that there is anything wrong with it. The replacement potentiometer has a uh, double pole single throw switch attached. I personally regard that important, especially on AC DC equipment like this. Now I'll go on to wire up the heater chain circuit. The valve heater chain has received replacement wire. The rubber that sheathed the original wire was uh, perished. I have plugged this chassis into an isolated 240 volt supply. Doubtful you will see the dull 
orange heaters glowing. But that part of the radio circuit is now functioning. My next task is to get power up to where the HD rail begins. I'll go over to my laptop so you can take a look at the circuit diagram and uh, develop a clear understanding of what I've achieved and where I will be going next. Having achieved mains potential through to the heater ballast resistor R19 815 ohms and then on through the uh, heater chain I will now go on to connect R18, 47 ohms. I've uh, installed a 68 ohms since I don't have any 47 ohms of appropriate size in stock. To the uh, anode of V4, CY31 rectifier valve. From its cathode, I will replace electrolytic capacitors C23 reservoir, 8 microfarad, which will become 10 microfarad at 400 VDC, and C24 smoothing, 16 microfarad, which will become 22 microfarad at 400 VDC, which, along with the low frequency choke and rewound, forms a Pi filter circuit. That is as far as I will go in this instance, as there is no load. Consequently, damage to the rectifier and associated components can occur. Due to the round saucepan shape of the Bakelite cabinet and the chassis it accommodates, I will not fabricate a small printer circuit board as I usually do for the reservoir and smoothing electrolytic capacitors as there is limited space available. Instead I'll uh, restuff the dual capacitor canister purely for convenience and not in any way related to uh, aesthetics. Looking more closely at this uh, aluminium canister you will observe the two electrolytic capacitors within are as dry as the Gobi Desert. <laughs> as I um, shake this canister, which was uh, manufactured by Hunts, it's uh, dried. Uh, it's dried. Um, just like contents are coming out in a similar fashion to salt coming out of a, um, a salt pot. Normally I hardly ever restuff capacitors unless of course I am uh, requested to do so. My personal point of view in that respect is life is too short to muck about. Just chop the old capacitors out of the circuit, fit the new ones and get on with the next task. Time is money was drilled into me throughout much of my um, apprenticeship and of course it has stuck. <laughs> it's not my intention to labour this. The entrails have been drawn from this uh, canister and uh, it is ready to house this two electrolytic capacitor arrangement. I'll very likely apply some grab adhesive or something like that to one side of the inside of this uh, canister to prevent uh, these two electrolytic capacitors uh, rattling around inside. Nothing fancy, just functional. And I'll also apply this tag strip um, over the open end of uh, this canister onto which I'll solder the uh, capacitor flying leads 
Nothing more than that. And there it is, chaps. Two electrolytic capacitors secured inside this aluminium canister with instant grab adhesive. Sure, it lacks finesse. I'd be the first person to point that out, but I'm not one for encouraging restuffing the capacitors. <laughs> In this instance, when compared to my usual fabricating a printed board, uh, this was a quicker and convenient option, since space on the underside of this chassis is more limited than one might think due to the saucepan shape cabinet. <laughs> Now I'll um, complete constructing the rest of the pie filter circuit. It was whilst I was uh, installing the two replacement reservoirs and smoothing electrolytic capacitors, plus refitting the low frequency smoothing choke I rewound, I decided to continue and wire in the uh, audio output circuit pertaining to the uh, CBL31 valve. And of course you might have guessed correctly. <laughs> I thought I might as well continue wiring in the demodulation <laughs> circuit whilst I had my soldering iron in hand. Yes, I know, I did say I would only go as far as wiring in the pie filter circuit, but I went ahead and did a little extra. At least it's complete and uh, out of the way. <laughs> I had two minor mishaps. I um, broke the wire off uh, this uh, resistor. Which forms part of the audio output circuitry cathode and it reads well within 10% uh, tolerance despite having a tolerance range of 20%. So um, that component was replaced and uh, I broke a 15 picofarad diode feedback capacitor. Oh dear. It has been replaced with a 18 picofarad capacitor since I only have 15 picofarad capacitors rated at 65 VDC and uh, it needs to be from 350 VDC. My uh, clumsy work has been uh, made good again. <laughs> right, I'll uh, valve this radio chassis up, apply some isolated mains power and do a quick audio test. I hope I haven't achieved any more little mishaps. With a bit of luck I might be able to uh, buzz the audio. We shall see and hear. <laughs> yes, all four valves are in their designated valve bases. This chassis is connected to an isolated main supply. An external speaker has been plugged into the uh, audio output transformer. All I need to do is switch on and uh, wait for the valves to warm up. And here we have it chaps, the power supply and audio output circuits appear to be functioning. I'll uh, not do any refinements to those parts of this radio circuit at present. I'll uh, do all of that once I have this radio reconstructed and uh, working as a radio in uh, some shape or form. I'll now take you to the circuit diagram and we'll look at what has been achieved here. <laughs> oh 
looking at this circuit diagram, it is uh, straightforward as to why I went further than connecting R18, which in this instance is a 68 ohm resistor to the half wave rectifier valve V4 anode, as well as installing C23 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor C24 22 microfarad electrolytic capacitor and uh, reinstalling the low frequency choke I rewound. There is now HT on the rail as far as this point in this circuit diagram. The audio output transformer is connected between the HT rail and the CBL31 anode. Just there. There is HT voltage on its uh, grid 2. The left hand diode or demodulation is connected to IFT1 or L11 and uh, C36 trimmer capacitor which is part of the tank circuit. Grid 1 is connected to uh, R12. 1 meg log volume control. C19. 10 nanofarad. Coupling capacitor is fitted. R11. 100k. Diode load uh, is in place. Cathode resistors are 14, 330 ohms and R15, 150 ohms, potential divider as well as C18, 22 microfarad electrolytic capacitor is also in place. And uh, pi filter circuit C15, 100 PF capacitor. C16, also 100 PF capacitor, and R10, 47K resistor, are ready for action. <laughs> that is as far as I've gotten at present. So from here to the right is now complete. I'll wire in uh, this radio's front end circuits in part three. Indeed, I will be uh, rewiring this radio's uh, front end in part three. It could be said I've uh, gotten the more straightforward part of this radio circuit out of the way. The front end will be uh, far more demanding, but I won't let it worry me. Oh no. <laughs> I, uh, nonetheless, thank you for your time and interest. If you haven't subscribed to my uh, channel, now is as good a time as any to do so. Until next time, this is Phil saying, TTFN